This is the You Show Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome in to the You Show. I'm Chris Treft, along with Ben Gisselson for the USHL Awards You Show Podcast, a special edition here as we break down all of the USHL awards we've had so far. And Ben, it was a great season. We talk about it all the time. Unfortunately, it was cut short, but some of these kids are going to hear their names listed with some of the greats in the NHL and hockey. These awards are special for the kids. It's prestigious to win any of these because usually when you see these names, you're going to see them again in professional hockey. So all you have to do, Chris, is have a look back at last year or the year before or five years, 10 years ago, as long as they've been doing these awards for, and as long as they're listing them on the USHL website, I haven't gone back that far maybe as I should and, and through the annals of the website, but, and you're going to see those names, right? You're going to see big time players that at the time were only big time players in the USHL. And that's what we have this year, guys that we obviously expect to see playing not only uh, at some big name colleges in the coming future, or in the AHL, uh, but definitely at the NHL level very soon. We'll start off with the all-USHL third team. And if you look at this, I mean, these five or six players, they could easily be the first team. I mean, it, I don't know how these GMs and coaches and everyone that had a chance to vote got to pick these guys, because <laughs> I know it's how difficult it would be, especially with the parity in the USHL. It's amazing. But we'll start with the D on the all USHL third team from the Dubuque Fighting Saints, Braden Doyle, and from the Lincoln Stars, Jordan Power. You got, you got to see these guys live. I saw them tons and tons on, on the video. These are two guys, like we said, they could easily be second or first team all USHL, but some, some great defenders there, both offensively and defensively. I laughed at your comment, Chris, about the GMs having to vote on this. I agree. We have the easy job. We just get to talk about these yeah. guys, right? I mean, that's easy. We don't have to put them on certain teams because you're exactly right. Uh, it's not an easy job to figure out where all these guys go. Kind of similar to this, actually, in terms of both were quarterbacks. They were up top on the power play, both very good skaters. Uh, Braden Doyle has already gotten some kudos to his game with the LA Kings. He's a draft pick of the Kings. Um, so both of these guys, uh, I think, will be guys that we're going to see play hockey, obviously, at the next level, at the collegiate level, but then probably beyond it, if not the NHL level, for sure, the AHL level, both guys that uh, play with their head up all the time. They're, they're guys that I would like to ask if they know what color the puck is because they don't look down very often. Up front, three very talented forwards. Daniil Gushchin from the Muskegon Lumberjacks. That guy was a human highlight reel. He had Ty Jackson from the Dubuque Fighting Saints, and from the Sioux Falls Stampede, Sam Stang. So three forwards that could have easily been second or first team. They find themselves on the third team, but still an honor. And these guys, just dynamic forwards, all three of them. All three players, tremendous players in their own right. Daniil Gushin stands out to me just because of, like you said, the highlight reel capabilities this kid has. And he scored some timely goals, too. Some of the highlights we saw, they weren't just 6-1, 7-1 games. They were overtime winners, or they were late third-period goals from Gushin. So he has a bit of a clutch for the dramatic as well. But all three deserving of where they're at and uh, a great trio of forwards. And a shout-out to the Sioux City Musketeers as well because Sam Stang actually played the majority of the season with them. He only played four games with Sioux Falls as he – made the switch over there late in the season before we went on pause. But nonetheless, all five of those skaters, well-deserved, all USHL third team. The goaltender is Christian Stover, the Madison Capitals. He's a guy that – that guy saw a ton of shots. And he won some games for Madison because of how good he was between the pipes. He was under siege at times, but he answered the bell as much as possible. And they didn't have the results in the wins and losses category. But, I mean, to him to have the good of stats that he did – in that situation is incredible and, and, you know, great to see him get rewarded with a, a third team pick here. And a player that I got to know a little bit, he began the year in Des Moines before he was traded to Madison. Christoph Papp sent back great example of a great trade. Des Moines got something they were looking for in a solidified top line center. Madison got a goalie that they were looking for. The Bucks made it clear that they were happy with the goaltending setup Cameron Rowe was giving them. So it's an example of a great trade and, 
he went from one team that gave up a lot of shots, the Bucks gave up a lot of shots all year, to the team that gave up more shots than the Bucks. And I think it was 15th in the league is where the Bucks were, and 16th is where the Capitals were. So you're right, Chris. This guy saw rubber all day long. And to have the kind of numbers that he had, considering the siege he was under on a nightly basis, kudos to him. Uh, he's a great kid, works hard, committed to the game, hones his craft, and a well-deserved spot for him on the third all USHL team. Fifth best save percentage in the league. And that's really incredible considering all the circumstances. Now on to the all USHL second team. We'll start with the defenders again. First from the Omaha Lancers, Nash Neenhaus, and also defense from the Green Bay Gamblers, Mason Lowry. And these are two excellent defenders. Once again, full 200 foot game in both ends of the ice. And they are your all USHL second team defensemen. I loved Nash Neenhouse's game, just loved his game. Straight line player, moves the puck up north very, very quickly. And I'm remembering, too, he wasn't afraid to put his head down and catch a guy clean and hard through center ice with one of those old school open ice hits you don't see as often anymore as you used to in the game. And uh, the old school hockey guy in me loves those kind of hits when they're clean. And I remember Neenhaus throwing a few of those. And Neenhaus led the charge on that blue line. So uh, he's the guy that stands out to me amongst the defensemen on team number two. And Lowry, the big guy, 6'4", 194 pounds. I mean, he was a presence out there with that long reach and put up some good numbers, more so known for a nice defensive game, but 29 assists, 37 points in 48 games. So much deserved there from him as well. The forwards from the Youngstown Phantoms, Trevor Kuntar. Another Jackson from the Butte Fighting Saints, Dylan Jackson, Ty's brother on the second team. And then a forward from the Chicago Steel, no surprise here, Matthew DeSafal. Well, DeSafal led the league, uh, so obviously understandable why he's getting his name called on a all-USHL team. Didn't see a whole lot of Trevor Kuntar, but every time I looked at a Youngstown box score, he was, of course, putting the puck in the back of the net. The guys that I do know well, the Jackson twins, Dylan and Ty, Uh, You look at Dylan, you look at Ty, you think of Henrik, you think of Daniel. It was the USHL version of the Sedin twins up in Vancouver previously, of course. They're retired now. But uh, the Jackson twins, extremely, extremely talented, not only with their hands, but in their head. They think the game marvelously well. And as we've seen twins do in the NHL and in hockey, they find each other when no one else can. And They did that all season. They exploded off the charts right at the beginning of the year, and they never gave up all the way to the end of the season, uh, staying in the top of the league all year long. And the goaltender, former Clark Cup champion a couple seasons ago from the Sioux Falls Stampede, Jackson Stauber. Didn't see a lot of him this year. Saw a lot of him last year uh, with the herd. Just a guy that really is a gamer, right? I mean, going into that playoff last year, you think about – was he going to be the starter? He kind of had given up a little bit of time throughout the course of the season. He ended up being the Clark Cup Finals MVP last year. Went to school this year, University of Minnesota State Mankato, comes back, lights it up from there. was a big reason why the herd were surging later on in the year. And I think the Stampede, like many teams, but maybe specifically the Stampede, were a little bit more bummed than everybody else considering the fact that I think they thought they were really coming on towards the end of the year and they were a team that were going to make some noise in the playoffs but kind of the same story with every team at that point but no doubt Jackson Stauber well deserved of being the goalie on the second team. Now to the first team all USHL which is an incredible honor it's uh, it's tough to get on this list you really have to impress your comrades from around the league we'll start with the defense as always no surprise here from the Chicago Steel, Owen Power, and from the Tri-City Storm, Mitchell Miller. Well, I think we talked about it in an earlier podcast, Mitchell Miller being kind of a sleeper pick in the NHL draft. I think hopefully this gets him out of that sleeper category maybe a little bit. I was wowed by him all year long. And Owen Power, defenseman of the year, say no more. Yeah, the, the, those two guys. I, we said it was really hard to select. Maybe it was really hard to select after that. Those two guys were kind of an easy one and two. They're both going to make a name for themselves in the future, to say the least. Up front, the forwards from the Omaha Lancers, Alexander Campbell. From the Chicago Steel, Brendan Brisson. And from the Dubuque Fighting Saints, Reese Gaber, the league's leading goal scorer. 
We're going to talk about Gaber here soon. We're going to talk about Prasan. We're going to hear from both of them. I want to talk about Alex Campbell from Omaha for just a second. This guy deserves to be there. I think back to the beginning of the season, David Wilkie, head coach of Omaha and GM of Omaha. Uh, I've had the opportunity to interview him a number of times before games, so we have a little bit of rapport with each other. And preseason at the beginning of the year, we sat down for an interview. We talked a little bit, got off the interview, and then we talked a little bit more. And he talked about Alex Campbell and said, I think this guy has the capability of being the most elite player in the league this year. I can't wait to see what he can do for our organization. And he started off strong, but then he absolutely just exploded towards the end of the year. He was a big reason why Omaha was knocking on doors towards the top of the Western Conference. He's an extremely smart player. He plays with speed. He plays with some pace, and the kid can finish. So I was really impressed by Campbell all year long and the opportunities I had to see him play and uh, opportunity for us to get to talk about, obviously, Gaber and Brisson a little bit later. Campbell was a third-round pick by the Nashville Predators, 65th overall in the 2019 draft, and then he elected to come to the USHL before going to Clarkson, and he made an impact tied for fifth in the league and scoring 57 points in 46 games. That's pretty incredible what he was able to do. And the goaltender? From Sweden and the Dubuque Fighting Saints, Eric Portillo. Where to begin with him? Well, I guess it begins and ends with him. The puck didn't get behind him very often this year. Any of the best uh, pads yeah. in the league. Yeah, yeah, they, they did look sharp. But I just, I just think Dubuque's unis are great. I've always been a sucker for all red uniforms. I think Dubuque's got a, a great setup uh, for their style throughout the league. But yeah, an excellent segue too to talking more about Eric Portillo because we obviously. I uh, want to celebrate him winning goaltender of the year. And so we had the opportunity to chat with him. And Chris, I'll let you intro that, and then we can really get in depth on Eric. Yeah, so there was your all USHL teams, the first, second, and third teams. Congratulations to all those players, and hopefully they can continue like many of the players that have been named to those awards in the past and continue on to have a great career in professional hockey. But now we'll get to the, the big individual awards, and we'll start with Rookie of the Year. And this goes to a guy who played a few games in the USHL last year for Green Bay, spent most of the year with Shattuck St. Mary's, comes into the USHL his first full season. He's with Chicago Steel. He was part of that dynamic forward core. And he had a huge impact on the league amongst the top scorers in the league all season long. It was almost an easy choice for Rookie of the Year, Brennan Brisson from Chicago Steel. Joined now by USHL Rookie of the Year, as well as a first-team All-USHLer in Brendan Brisson of the Chicago Steel. Brendan, pleasure to have you on, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for having me. When you look at the Chicago Steel, it's hard to pick a place to start about why you guys had so much success this year. But let's start with Brendan Brisson. Obviously, an incredible rookie year for you. You win Rookie of the Year. And it's not cocky to answer this yes, but did you feel like you were coming into the league and you were going to have a kind of season like you did, or did it kind of take you by surprise a little bit, the success that you had? Uh, I mean, I was confident in myself and my play, just like developing the last three years at Shattuck St. Mary's. So just surrounding myself in good environments. And I knew Chicago coming in, it was going to be a really good environment for me, hockey-wise and just also as a person. But, uh, like, when you come in and you got all the support from the staff and everyone's all bought in on the same page, it kind of makes it easy to hold the glue together, like, as a team and feel, feel like you're ready, that your play is ready, you're ready personally. And just the guys in the locker room, everyone was so, like, bought into the same goal. And you got guys like John Spetz. And, look, you're looking up to them like leaders. And it's just – made the transition a whole lot easier for me at the end of the season Chicago was on a 13 game winning streak for most teams that would be the best that you tend to do throughout the course of the season you guys won 10 11 12 in a row on a couple of different times throughout the year when you're playing on a team like that when you get into games where it is tight is there just that belief in the room that we know we can find a way out of this and get the win because you've done it time and time again our team we knew we knew we had the, all the skill, but it was at the end of the day was if we were going to put the work in or not. And that's what we did every single day and practice in the weight room, taking our recovery sessions, video sessions, everything so seriously. So when we got into times like those, like 
there was no panic button. It was just us playing hockey the way we wanted to play. And we were all on the same page. So it just, when we did get down, it was like, okay, we know how to play. We know how to win. We know how to score goals. And that's, that's what happened when we were in those situations. You had six games with the Green Bay Gamblers at the 2018-19 season. You put up one goal. A little cup of coffee after your time at Shattuck St. Mary's before you went to Chicago Steel this year in your rookie season. How important were those six games to get accustomed to the USHL and give you a little leg up? I mean, yeah, for sure. I played in the, the USHL Fall Classic against Sioux City, and I remember just the game was so much more like a man's game compared to what I was compared uh, playing against at Shattuck. In the past years but um yeah it was it was really nice to get those games out of the way like kind of get my feet wet and expecting like knowing what to expect more for the the season with the steel but yeah when I was up there all the I mean the gamblers they treated me really well and I, I thank them for giving me the opportunity to me in the league and calling me up for those six games and it really helped me coming following my uh, following this year so Scored a lot of pretty goals this season, assisted on a lot of pretty goals this season. Are there any that stand out to you more than the rest in the USHL chapter of Brendan Brisson's dazzling career? I mean, it's always fun to score the big goal, have the big assist and the close games. But what was really was really cool was I had I, I scored a goal in the, the Frosty Cup, and that was just something that was different to me. Like, I've never played in an outdoor game, and most people can't say they – they played outside and played hockey against a good organization. And, I mean, when I scored, it was just really weird. Like, I looked up and I was outside. So, just, that, was just, that was something different. And hopefully, hopefully one day it happens again down the road. When people win awards, there's always people to thank. Who are those people in your life, whether it be within the Steel organization or outside of it, that – are responsible for helping get you to this moment. First of all, you got to thank like all my, all my teammates. I mean, none of that would have happened if if I wasn't with them. We had a great group, and it just made made the level of play easier. And we all bound, bonded together. We went through ups and downs, and even though our team had the record that we had, we still went on like we still had our ups and downs. So just the way we were able to bond together and. It was a special group of guys that we still talk every single day. And uh, got to thank my, my family, my brother, my mom, and my dad just for the support, letting me, you know, letting me go away to Shattuck when I was 14 and really pursuing the goal of playing hockey. And just the staff, Ryan Hardy, all the staff, Coach Sheehan, Coach Moore, Coach Moss, Parker, <laughs> everyone in the front office just being there, being being there with us just in the lo basically in the locker room you know we were all one one group of one group of uh steel it wasn't just their teammates it wasn't just my teammates it was everyone so Andre Svechnikov, Jake Gensel, Johnny Goudreau, Anders Lee, Max Pacioretty, Kyle Ocposo, Joe Pavelski just to name a few are all guys that have also won Rookie of the Year in the USHL. What does that mean to you to be to add your name to that star-studded list? Obviously, just to be having your name like with with around surrounded by those guys is something special. But those guys have all made it to the NHL, having really good careers. And just because I got named this right now doesn't mean I'm there. I gotta still still work, still work on my game, get better, and hopefully one day I'll be on that list with with those guys. So. Well, Brendan, we're hoping to see your name on a draft list in not too long in the NHL. Uh, thanks so much for this time. Best of luck uh, on your next steps in your career, uh, heading on, of course, to Michigan, and then uh, looking forward to hopefully seeing you be on there in not too long from now. Congratulations, and uh, be well. Yeah, thank you. So in case you missed it there during the interview, guys that have won Rookie of the Year in the past, Shvechnikov, Gensel, Goudreau, Lee, Pacioretty, Joe Pavelski, these are big-name guys that have won Rookie of the Year and gone on to have very good NHL careers, almost superstar status for some of them in the NHL. So this is a really prestigious award, and it's kind of funny if you look at it. There's probably more prestigious Rookie of the Year than Player of the Year in, in, in some aspects. There's been so many good players that have played in the USHL for one season and gone on to college and so on and so forth. But that's an incredible list, and Brisson could be another one of them that 
really turns into a great NHL player. Think about players that walk into the USHL at the age you have to be to be a rookie and do what these guys do. It's no wonder they don't often play a second year because the colleges or teams that own their rights are saying, we need this kid on our team right now. <laughs> so Brendan yeah. Versailles will likely be another name on that list that we'll look back on later, later in life and go, whoever wins the rookie of the year, five, 10 years on the road, he'll be on that list. You'd imagine uh, in the future of guys like Pacioretty uh, and so on and so forth that have obviously made huge names for themselves in the NHL now. So best of luck to Brendan at the University of Michigan. And speaking of the University of Michigan Wolverines, let's go to the defenseman of the year, also a future Wolverine. It goes to Owen Power. And this kid, he's 6'5", 209 pounds. He's only 17 years old. He's been playing in the league. This is his second season in the league. Came in as a 16-year-old. Put up great numbers both times. This year was exceptional. 40 points in 45 games. He was a plus 16. It was a big part of all those forwards having success because no one could get around him. And then he got the puck so quick to these guys and sent them on their way to do their thing. Such a young kid to win defenseman of the year. And he's, I mean, he's a potential top five pick coming up in the draft, not this year, but next. So defenseman of the year goes to Owen Power. That's what everybody kept telling me when we talk about Chicago, when I would talk to whatever, whoever it be, friends and scouting or just throughout the hockey world, throughout the league, this Owen Power kid, he's going to be a top five pick in the draft. And I, my eyes would go up and then they would say, but not for this draft, for the 2021 draft. And I went, yeah. oh my goodness, I mean, goodness. Uh, and so I was so excited to watch him play. We went out to Chicago to play them in February, my first eye test with this guy and he's hurt. Obviously, you never want to see guys hurt for any reason, but I was really bummed because I'm thinking, you know, this is an opportunity to see a potential top five pick, and he's probably not going to be back next year. Uh, I was happy to see him when Chicago over, uh, came to Des Moines a couple of weeks later to play us in Des Moines. Got to see him, got to see the eye test, and he didn't disappoint. You think about defensemen that just control the game, this guy does it. Obviously, he has a, a big presence on the ice. He's a bigger player, but does not see any of his skill be relinquished due to his size he's smooth he moves the puck he defends extremely well and I think he's well deserving of someone that we'll be keeping our eyes on very very uh diligently next year during the 2021 NHL draft got to see him live at the Frosty Cup for the first time and not just on video and like you said I was not shocked and with all the hype and what's funny is I was actually on the ice doing some video stuff for like warm-ups and I took the camera and I was skating up towards him and he looks so menacing because he's such a big kid. But then you turn around and see his face and he looks like a peewee. Uh, you know, like he's got, he's got that baby face going. And it might fool some people because, I mean, he, he's a grown man already. He still might be growing. He could be bigger. And for someone to be so big, to already be a smooth skater is really incredible because you remember you hear things about Tyler Myers and Zdeno Ochara coming into the NHL draft and how bad of skaters they were. And – they got drafted because they were big, and then they got turned into NHL players because they learned how to skate. He already has that, and he has the size, not just the, the height. He has the bulk. He's a strong kid. He's a immensely gentlemanlike and very nice kid off the ice as well, comes from a good family. So, I mean, the sky's the limit for this kid, and congratulations to him. Joined now by Chicago Steel defenseman and defenseman of the year in the United States Hockey League, Owen Power. Owen, we appreciate you coming on with us here this afternoon, leading all defensemen in the league in points. You were dynamic. You delivered offensively. You delivered defensively. From your perspective, what was the first thing that came to mind when you learned you had won this award? It's a huge honor to, to be selected by it. So I think uh, that, that was uh, the one thing that really, really came to mind, just how, how much of an honor it is. For a defenseman playing on one of the top offensive teams this league has seen in decades. What was that like? Granted, we know you're an offensive defenseman, but still playing defense is a major component. Not that Chicago couldn't play defense, but tell us kind of what the formula was like being a defenseman on such an offensively laden team like Chicago was this year. Yeah, I think uh, the, the coaches give us a lot of freedom to kind of uh, wander around the ice. Uh, so I think that helps. And then, Obviously, we had some really talented forwards, and even the other D that I played with were really talented. So 
um, it wasn't too hard to, to make plays when those guys were on the ice. I, I'm curious to know, Owen, when talking about watching your team this year, and I had the opportunity to do so just twice, but the one thing that really stuck out to me, you mentioned the wandering. And it, it wasn't just Ames wondering, you as a defenseman and, and rest of your, your decor went very purposely, purposefully, I should say, to the places that you went, but it was almost like there wasn't positions for a while. Would you agree with that? When you guys got in the ozone, you flowed pretty methodically. For, for us, a, a big, big part of our game is kind of reading off each other and not just going places to go places. So I think we, we spent a lot of time working at kind of filling filling uh spots for other guys and kind of moving to not only get yourself self open but also your teammates for those fans who are listening that don't know because you are from the greater toronto area we're seeing more and more now not only players that come into this league from canada but come into this league and have success like yourself we also talked to reese gaber what do you think is leading to this this change that now canadians that may have originally 10, 15, 20 years ago, looked more at the major junior route. There's starting to be more of that tick towards high-end players in Canada choosing to take the USHL route to keep that amateur status alive. What was the decision process like for you because you were a second-round pick in the OHL? Yeah, for me, I, I always knew I wanted to play college, so it was just whether, whether or not to stay, stay home and play Tier 2 or go to the USHL. So I think uh, just knowing that this was the best league for me to to play in that that helped a lot. And then I, I honestly don't know what why it's so many more people have kind of chosen to go play uh, college hockey. But uh, like I'm, I I think it's a uh, the best route for me. So that's why I did it. Those degrees certainly help, don't they? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So for you, if you could pick one thing from your time in the USHL, take away your defenseman of the year and all the accolades that your team had, but for you as an individual, what's one thing that you're going to take away from the United States Hockey League into your freshman year at Michigan next year? I think just uh, going from playing minor hockey to playing junior, you realize that you can't just go show up at the rink and kind of play. You, you always got to be be on it and I think that's just gonna well definitely gonna continue throughout so I think you always gotta you can't take any any shifts off uh as you get older so I think that uh for me was the biggest thing that I kind of kind of learned what excites you most about next year Michigan Wolverines we've talked about it on this podcast the number of Wolverine commits in this league that had tremendous seasons it's very high how excited are you to go into Yost Arena and wear the maize and blue. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited. I think we're we're gonna have a really good team next year. So I think it should be a lot of fun playing there. Well, yeah. If you go by the All USHL First Team and the individual <laughs> awards, you should have a pretty good year next year. <laughs> uh, yeah. Three of the four guys that won the major awards are all Michigan guys. Do you talk to Brendan about that at all? And how excited are you to have some familiar faces when you go to Michigan next year? Yeah, it's nice for me to to know a couple guys going in. So, uh, I think just during the year, me me and Brendan didn't really say much about it. We were kind of just worried about that year. But now that the season has been uh, canceled, I think we've been we've been talking a little bit more uh, about it. So, is it going to be nice to have Portillo on your team this time instead of trying to get pucks past that guy? Yeah, yeah. We he he gave us a good game. The one game he played us, we couldn't couldn't score so uh it'll definitely be definitely be nice when you think back on your time in the ushl two seasons incredibly enough as a 16 year old and then just this year a 17 year old you'd look at the numbers and you wouldn't think your age you play with wisdom beyond your years but when you think back on your time in this league where do you think and what areas of your game do you think saw the most growth from day one to now where you're at today um I think, I think for me, uh, the biggest thing, my skating really took another, another level, uh, like all throughout, I thought I continued to get, to get better at it, especially like my, my first three strides, which I, I work on a ton, uh, at, at the end of practice and stuff and during practice. So I think that, uh, with that getting so much better, I think that just opens up so, so much more for you when you're playing. So, uh, I think that was the biggest part. And 
I think that helped in every area, kind of. Lastly, for me, Owen, whenever awards are won, even if they are individual, there are a host of people that deserve thanks. I'm sure you've got plenty of them. Who are those people for you, whether it be within the Steel organization or outside of it? Yeah, obviously, my parents play play a huge right huge role in uh who I am and uh the player I, I I've become and then just pretty much everyone from the steel um all the time they they spent watching video doing extra work after practice um so I think uh my parents and all the coaching staff and the the rest of the staff at the steel um kind of deserve deserve that so lastly, and maybe most importantly, is your goal song that the Steel have for you going to be carried over to Michigan? Oh, uh, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't even uh, I didn't even realize it until my – I think my billets were the one that told me, or maybe my parents, but uh, who knows? We expect nothing but the, the best for you going forward. So best of luck with everything in the future, and thanks for joining us here today. Yeah, thank no, you, thank you. Thank you. A big thanks to Owen Power and best of luck to him at the University of Michigan and at the NHL draft coming up in a couple years. Easy choice for defenseman of the year. He's going to be great and not only his college career, but at the NHL draft and hopefully at the NHL level. But moving on, speaking once again of the University of Michigan, let's go to the goaltender of the year. I see what you're doing here with these transitions. I see what you're doing, Chris. Well, it's, it made it really easy because the first three guys are all Michigan commits. They almost got the full sweep of the awards, which if the Wolverines aren't good next year or even the year after, I will be shocked with how many players they're pulling. Yeah, out of no those doubt. Players. Just in general, the amount of commits coming to the University of Michigan. But they get another free shout-out here as the goaltender of the year, University of Michigan commit from the Dubuque Fighting Saints, their netminder, Eric Portillo. Not much got behind him. His numbers don't lie when you have a look at them. He's number one in the league in goals allowed. He was number one in the league in save percentage. And he played for a team that was winning more than they were losing. He was doing it all and uh, really enjoyed this interview with him. Seems like just your classic Swedish kind, but also competitive hockey player that we've come to know. Particularly enjoyed you chatting with him about Henrik Lundqvist uh, because, of course, as a goaltender born in Sweden, the king is his king. So uh, looking forward to having this interview out for our listeners. Now we welcome in the goaltender of the year from the Dubuque Fighting Saints, Eric Portillo. Eric, how does that sound, goaltender of the year? You know, it's an amazing feeling to, uh, to get that award. I'm both proud and honored to, to receive it, and uh, yeah, it feels very good. You had a great season. Obviously, the Dubuque Fighting Saints had a great season. If you look at the awards in the USHL, it's just littered with Fighting Saints. Why do you think that you had so much personal success and the overall team success as well? From the day I landed in Dubuque, um, I got taken care of so well. Both Oliver, Oliver David, the head coach, and my billets met me at the airport and picked me up. And since that day, they treated me very well. So. I think just uh, the atmosphere and the team spirit we had in Dubuque this year was uh, was amazing and something I something uh, I can't really compare. So it was uh, it was a great feeling and a great team with with good leadership. So that was the reason I think. When you talk to Oliver David, your head coach, the one thing he always brings up about this year's team was how tight the group was. Do you agree with that? How close was this team from goaltender all the way to the 15th forward on the roster? Yes, absolutely. I mean, everyone could joke with everyone in the locker room. It was such a nice team spirit, you know. Yeah, I agree with Oliver 100%. Is there a game you remember most from this season personally where you left that game thinking, I really delivered tonight? I mean, maybe the, we had a game away against uh, Omaha, I think. Um, and that was a game, um, I think we had a couple injuries and stuff. And I felt like my game really worked out there. So, uh, yeah, maybe that game. What was the final score to that game? 
I think we won in the shootout, 3-2. Not many goals against, so yep, you did your job. <laughs> yeah. So we got some inside info uh, on another award winner in Reese Gaber, forward of the year and player of the year, that you two were pretty tight, not only on the ice, but off the ice as roommates. And also there were some pretty fun but spirited battles you and him had during practice. Can you tell the fans about that? Yeah, no, I mean, we lived together um, at our billet house with John and Gibby. So we knew each other very well. He, he took great care of me from, from the start. And on the ice, you know, it, it's always a battle. It's fun playing against uh, a guy that's skilled. So, uh, yeah, you know, we, we really competed hard on the ice. And, uh, yeah, it was a battle. You're a Buffalo Sabres draft pick in the NHL. You just won goalie of the year in the USHL. There are young goaltenders, maybe even young Swedish goaltenders, that want to be Eric Portillo. What would you tell the next generation of goaltenders about following in your path? I think just working hard, it's, uh, it's a cliche, but it, it works. It's, uh, it is what it's all about. Uh, finding your path as well. I mean... I've always think or thought that school is a very important thing. So I chose the college path and took my own way. Uh, something that not a lot of different or other Swedish guys usually does. Um, so, yeah, I think finding your own way and working hard, that's the, the recipe. So what went into your decision to pick the University of Michigan and did it have anything to do with being the same colors as the uh, Sweden national team? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but, you know, that was also a thing. You know, when I got to Ann Arbor for the first time with my dad and met the, the leadership group there, the coaches, um, and also a couple of former alumni uh, who played on the team, you know, it was such a great spirit, and I really loved how how Michigan, um, how how it looked, and how it like the feeling of uh, Yost Ice Arena, and just yeah, I've seen on video the fans how amazing that is as well. So I got very excited by the setup, and uh, I know how how good school Michigan is, both academically and uh, athletically. So you grew up idolizing, or probably still idolize, Henrik Lundqvist being a draft pick of the Sabres, and hopefully you can make the NHL sooner rather than later. If he's still playing in the league, how cool would it be to line up crease to crease with Henrik Lundqvist? You know, that's, that would be uh, amazing. That would be a dream come true for sure. That's still, still a way, far away to get there, but yeah, that would absolutely be a dream come true for sure. Do you think you could beat him in that game? Hopefully. If I get to the NHL, I will probably. <laughs> Hopefully. Well, Eric, once again, congratulations. It's a, it's a real honor. You now go onto a list of some very excellent goaltenders and some NHL goalies as goaltender of the year. So congratulations and best of luck with your hockey future. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. So big thanks to Eric for joining us, calling all the way from Sweden. And unfortunately, moving on for the Wolverines, we don't have another University of Michigan guy, almost a clean sweep. But what we're going to do is we're going to take two awards and combine them into one because that's how good this guy was. Not only was he the forward of the year, but the player of the year, the commit of North Dakota, Reese Gaber. Well, not quite. Michigan in terms of the national championship background that the Wolverines have, but pretty close. North Dakota, one of the most celebrated schools there are, and probably the most celebrated player in the league this year in Reese Gaber. He kind of had it all, right? Uh, mature player. He was a 99 birth year, so he played with a lot of maturity, played really, really fast north and south game, could finish with the best of them and uh, was a big leader in that locker room, I know, too, uh, from talking to Oliver David. So a complete package type player, and uh, I think North Dakota is getting a real blue chip player out of Reese Gaber. He led the USHL in goals with 34. I mean, that was a decisive one, as not many people were close to him. And this was 34 in 47 games. There was still time left. Like, 
this guy, I don't want to say would have easily have gotten 40, but there's a good chance he would have gotten 40 goals. And to do that in the USHL is an incredible feat, a, a league that's so good defensively, so sound in a full 200-foot game. I'm not saying goals are never scored in the USHL, but for guys to get 30 and 40 goals is an extreme rarity. He had 34 and 47. That's darn near a goal a game if you look at it. He also had 21 assists in those 47 games or 55 points. And he, how many plays of the week was that guy involved in? Granted, it was the, uh, same, it was the was, same move on, on most of them. Yeah. But he was so good at yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. I think fans are going to love talking about that move, right? And not that I think Reese took the curtain away and completely everything he's got up his sleeve. But I wanted to know how often he's worked on that. I know Jack Molesky, play-by-play guy from Dubuque, told us to ask him specifically about that because he saw how often Reese was working on that move, and it certainly panned out. The other thing I think about with Reese Gaber is playing on a very good Dubuque team, but a Dubuque team known more for defense and goaltending, right? They had 123 goals allowed, nobody fewer in the league than that. They scored a little bit, 180 goals for it's a good output. It's not a Chicago team that was blowing away records in the goal scoring category. So this was not a Reese Gaber playing on a Chicago team that is a thoroughbred offense. This is on a defense first team. So to do what he did, lead the league in goals scored, a testament to his individual capability. He also wasn't even the leading scorer on his team. Ty Jackson <laughs> had 58 points in 48 games as Gaber came in with a, you know, a terrible 55 points in 47 games. Oh, right? just, just terrible. Yeah. But man, what is he doing? How much respect can one guy have to where he's not even the leading scorer on his team? He goes undrafted last year. And he comes in, he has another great year, 34 goals, and he gets named forward of the year and player of the year. I mean, this is a player of the year over how many unbelievable players in the USHL, and he got named both of those. That's really incredible from a guy that, like I said, wasn't even the leading scorer on his team. The amount of respect he has from around the league is incredible. Now joined by not only the USHL forward of the year, but the USHL player of the year and Dubuque Fighting Saints forward, Reese Gaber. Enjoying all of these announcements of all the awards going out. Yours, obviously, is a special one because you swept the forward and the player of the year award. So not just uh, one prestigious award, but you have two of them. What does that mean for you as a player? I think it's obviously uh, very humbling, and, and I'm very honored to receive those awards. Um, I guess it's, uh, it was obviously pretty great news when I heard it and uh, kind of left me speechless for a bit. Um, but, yeah, kind of – Looking at it now after after hearing the news, it uh, kind of sank in right away. And it's, um, like I said, I'm very honored to be able to receive those awards. Second-year player in Dubuque, fourth-year junior player. How much of this season's success do you attribute to the fact that you've learned how to play at this level over a handful of years? And I'm always curious to talk with guys that have played at the junior level a while because I think a lot of times now people are stressed to – get in, get out, and get to college. You took a different route. Look at the results. Yeah, I think so. Um, obviously, maybe I was a bit of a late bloomer. Um, but I think in the end, I always say to myself that uh, there's no rush, um, especially going into college. I always see these kids going in um, early. And um, just so you can say you go in as a true freshman or it looks cool, whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it, it never hurts to kind of – um, just wait it out and make sure you're ready. And um, even if you are ready, you can be even more ready, I think. Um, and, yeah, you always see kids um, coming back from college. Things don't work out, whether they go into really and stuff. And um, I always want to make sure that I'm ready to move on to the next level and I can kind of make the biggest impact at each level uh, that I can. Success on so many levels in Dubuque for you guys. There are a lot of people who are getting accolades this season, well-deserved accolades. But from your perspective, what made that team a definite Clark Cup contender? I think everything about it. Um, obviously, starting from our coaching staff, I think we had the right people in place there. Um, right from our owners to our GM, Callie, and, and Oliver. Um, our assistant coaches were great and all the support staff. Um, and I guess getting into the players, I think we had a little bit of everything. I think our depth was exceptional. Um, we had exceptional goaltending. Um, our offense obviously clicked really well. And, um, again, putting up uh, 
putting up a lot of goals per game and then not allowing many per game, obviously helping with the goal attempts and our, our stellar D. So, yeah, I think a little bit of everything really helped with that. You had 34 goals this season to lead the USHL. Why do you think you had so much success going from 22 goals in 61 games in 2018-19 to just blossoming with 34 this year to not only lead the USHL but kind of dominate in that category? I think it kind of goes uh, into two things. The first thing I think is obviously confidence. Um, going back this year, uh, coming to camp, I knew I was going to be a guy that was relied on and I knew what to expect throughout the league and everything. So um, obviously I think I, I knew what to expect and and I'd go out there every night feeling like I should score and I uh, had a good start. So and I think the second thing is obviously I, I worked on a, my shot and scoring touch at a time this year, um, whether it's after practice, staying on the ice, kind of trying to be one of the last guys off. Uh, just feeling confident about my shot. I'd try and leave every day and every practice feeling confident about that. And um, I think that kind of really paid off. And uh, like I said, I kind of went into every game feeling I, like I should score. So, Two years in the Manitoba Junior Hockey League, two years now in the USHL. From day one in Dubuque to now, where do you think you saw the most growth in your game? Uh, I'd say it would be this year. Um, I think this year – I. I think it started at the towards the end of last year where I really figured it out and uh, kind of figured the more I, the more work I put in, the more I get out of it. Um, so just kind of having that mindset to put in more work and, and do the little things right. Um, I think it pays off in the end. And I think my mind was, was really good this year uh, throughout the whole year. Um, just making sure I was, I was confident and, and working on little things in my game. And that's a big part of the reason why I decided to come back to Dubuque instead of going into college. Um, just I could always improve little things in my game. Even if they were ready for college, I could be more ready. And, um, yeah, I think it really paid off. We see it more and more nowadays as opposed to in the past. But Canadian players, not only coming to the United States Hockey League, but making an impact. Was the USHL always on your radar? What went in that decision to come to Dubuque and to – advance your career with the United States Hockey League? Yeah, I think uh, when I was younger, obviously growing up, the the first kind of thing you think of, especially in Western Canada, is the WHL and uh, major juniors kind of what every kid is is wanting to get drafted. Um, and to be honest, when I was younger, I didn't know about the USHL. And then um, I guess now nowadays it's kind of the college route is becoming a lot more um, normal, especially for Canadian players. So, um, yeah, I was, I was informed probably – um, my first year of junior hockey kind of learned about the USHL and um, it kind of happened after my last year there in the MJHL that uh, I realized that that was going to be kind of a spot that I wanted to look at for the next season. Um, so after kind of doing a little bit of research and um, just kind of waiting to see my name call in the draft, and uh, I guess, yeah, the rest is, the rest is history. So. Gilbert Plains, Manitoba, how much closer to home will you be playing next year at beautiful Ralph Engelstad Arena in North Dakota? Uh, it'll be a lot closer, that's, that's for sure. It's only about uh, five and a half or six hours. Um, Perfect. Opposed to, yeah, opposed to about 16, so. Bet your parents are looking forward to that. Yeah, they're super excited. They'll be able to <laughs> come down a lot, so. Now, will we see the patented breakaway move? with you at North Dakota? Are you going to keep that going or what? Do you think people are catching on? Uh, I, I think it'll <laughs> always be there. Um, I don't plan on shutting it down anytime soon. I, yeah, it's kind of my go-to. And uh, I think as, as long as I have the opportunity that I'll be, uh, I'll be able to do that. So We've got reports saying that's not just a natural move, that it's taken a lot of repetition and work from you to perfect that. True or false? I'd say that's true. I've definitely – um, I think earlier in my career, I wasn't very good at shootouts and, and breakaways. And, um, actually my first couple of years of junior, I think I was like over 10. And then the last two, last two years, I was, I was really well, I think only missed a couple. So, um, yeah, I think with repetitions, our, our goalie coach last year, Matt Miller helped me a ton with that. Um, or I guess my first year in Dubuque, sorry. And, uh, yeah, Mills, he's a great guy. He helped me out a ton and just learning repetitions and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I think it paid off. So we talked to your roommate and goaltender of the year in the USHL, Eric Portillo, earlier, and he was talking about how you guys had some spirited battles during practice that uh, 
you know, was more fun that you guys were roommates, but player of the year, forward of the year, and then the goaltender of the year. And it just so happens that you two battled against each other all year long. That must've helped with that going up against such a great goaltender all year. Yeah, it was. He's a, uh, he's an outstanding goaltender. And um, I think I've always said to guys this year, like going down and, and trying to shoot on him at like, there's no net. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's extremely tough to score on him and, um, obviously it's a really good challenge. I, I don't think we'd always give him a hard time in practice because nobody could ever score on him. But, um, I guess that's good for our side, obviously to benefit, to, to work on scoring. And then obviously he's on our side in games. So, um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that and definitely a good challenge to, to have every practice. For younger kids that are looking to get into the USHL that not only want to play here, but want to succeed here, like you have proven to do or to do, what are some things that you maybe wish you knew when you were coming into your junior eligibility that you know now? I, I think definitely putting in the work. Um, I feel that I really took a step my kind of my last this past year and then half of last year in Dubuque of just kind of putting in the work and um, you're going to get a lot out of it. And I think that's kind of the most important thing. You're going to you're going to get what you put in. And um, as long as you have the right mindset and, and kind of stay dialed in during the season, that it, it's super important. And I mean, there's always things you can work on, but um, I think your your mindset has a, a lot to do with it, um, whether it's just working on different things or um, being focused or dialed in in games. So I'd say that's probably the most important thing for me that I learned. Lastly, for me, we've heard you take your competitive nature to the links as well. And we had a question we were told to ask you, and that is, who is the better golfer, Reese Gaber or Dubuque Fighting Saints broadcaster Jack Molesky? <laughs> Uh, that's a tough one. I think the one time me and Jack played together, I think he actually beat me. We went to play at a TPC deer run, uh, just outside the Buke, which was actually really cool. Um, I think he maybe had a few more rounds in before me, but, uh, I'm definitely hoping to <laughs> go, uh, go ahead to head with Jack again sometime. So <laughs> hey, he can take that one. You'll take forward and player of the year, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll go, I'll go with that. A win's a win. <laughs> yeah. Well, Reese, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. And a big congratulations. That's a huge honor. Your name goes up on a list with some very great players that have won each of those awards in the USHL. We wish you a ton of luck going forward with the University of North Dakota. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, guys. Appreciate it, Reese. Thank you. Well, thanks again to Mr. Gaber for joining us. And congratulations once more on winning not only the Ford of the Year, but the player of the year, a great accomplishment for a great young man who's going to have a great future starting at North Dakota and then hopefully in the NHL after that. Yeah, I can't say enough. Everybody being gracious with their time. Great to chat with all those players. I had not had the chance to meet any of them up until uh, doing this here today. So uh, a great testament to the league, great representation throughout the league, and certainly a lot of talent from the forward of the year all the way down to the – third all ushl team so uh the future is bright for ushlers that's for sure and next week we get to talk more with the people that put these teams together and made these teams march the gms and the coaches so we won't spoil who's getting those awards but we do have the gm of the year and the head coach of the year coming your way next week so we're excited about that I want to give one shout out before we head off here to Brett Meske. The amount of work this guy put in this week with all the awards, mm -hmm. gathering ballots, putting it all together, writing the press releases, giving me all the stuff for the graphics, getting us all the stuff for the You Show podcast. The guy's a workhorse. He did a lot of work behind the scenes and he doesn't get seen much on the podcasts or on the media stuff. So, we just wanted to make sure that he got a shout out for all the hard work he's done and getting the credit where credit is due. So thank you to him for making all of this easy for us and making the league look as great as it does as always with all the awards. So I just wanted to make sure to get that out there. No doubt. Big thanks to Brent guys got uh, his degree in juggling plates, right? How much does he have on his plate on a daily yeah. basis? So uh, indeed a big thank you to Brent Meske, no doubt. So that will do it for us, for all of our guests here today. And Ben Gesselson, I'm Chris Treft, and this was the You Show Podcast. This is the You Show Podcast.